Hi, this is Gene. The concept that I'm going to talk about today is about fair or fairness. And I want to discuss how Chinese and Westerners may view fairness differently. Now, this is important because fundamentally, when we negotiate or work together, we're continuously, consciously or subconsciously thinking whether it is worthwhile for us to continue doing what we're doing, which means do we think we're getting a good deal or a fair deal? And of course, Chinese people are no different in this regard. Now, when we're doing business across cultures, it's always it's also important to really think about whether disputes or tensions can arise between well-intentioned and fair-minded people. Because we always want to assume that people are well-intentioned and fair-minded. And the answer to this question, of course, is also yes. Uh, it can occur. And the reason that tensions or conflict does is because perceptions and expectations between what is fair and not fair are different. Okay, so let's talk about how Westerners and Chinese define fairness. So in Western culture, we think things are fair generally when they are free from bias, dishonesty, or injustice. And as long as it meets these criteria, Westerners generally think it's fair whether we like the outcome or not. For Chinese, when the word fair or fairness is translated, you get uh, the Chinese word gong ping. Okay, so let's examine what characters are form this Chinese word for fair. Okay, so gong basically means uh, public or collectively owned or sometimes kind of like the common good. And that's the first character in fair. The second character in fair means equal, calm, or peaceful. Okay, so in essence, the Chinese definition of fair really is uh, something that is collectively shared equally and harmoniously. And it really has nothing to do with uh, being free from bias or anything that has to do with injustice. Okay, so now that we have these two different definitions of fairness, it's important for us to understand it in the cultural context of doing business in China. So what I have observed is that as Chinese society has transitioned towards capitalism over the last 30 years, and fewer goods are actually distributed by its rulers, which means that individuals now have more individual choice. What has happened is that the individual expectations of people who are culturally and traditionally accustomed to rulers deciding what is fair and how things should be distributed, their expectations have evolved to what appears in Western eyes to be more selfish. Okay. And you're going to perceive that once you start negotiating or communicating with somebody in Chinese. So it's important to really understand the cultural context of where this behavior comes from. Because if you can understand the Chinese historical and cultural context of fairness, you will much you will be able to kind of adjust your approach, your attitude, mindset, and approach. And I think that's kind of like the first step to be able to achieve real breakthroughs doing business in China. Okay, so this is just a really short video. Uh, I would love for you to leave your comments in the comment section below. Uh, if you want to learn more about how to achieve real breakthroughs doing business in China, you can follow me on any of my social media channels, subscribe to my YouTube, listen to me on Apple Podcast. And I'm going to remind everybody that knowing how to speak Chinese doesn't mean you know what to say in Chinese. But knowing what to say is a win in any language. Again, this is Gene. Thank you for listening.